Hello everyone, and welcome to my bold and beautiful channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Someone spikes Tom's ice blue drink. In Eric's office, Steffi and Hope continue to argue about Thomas's life choices. Steffi was overjoyed for her brother, who had found a woman who genuinely loved him. Steffi instructed Thomas to go into the future and leave Hope in the past, where she belonged. Hope, pretending to be the mother of Thomas's child, refused to allow Steffi humiliate her. Thomas requested if we might stop, but the women continued as if he wasn't present. Steffi stated that if Hope wanted a future with Thomas, she would be the one wearing his ring. Thomas liked Steffi watching out for him, but he didn't want her to be too harsh on Hope. He claimed he could handle his own life. His engagement had taken everyone by surprise, and Hope needed some time to comprehend it. He believed Hope would see that it was beneficial to everyone. Thomas asked them to stop squabbling. He despised it when they fought. Thomas left to pick up his son. Hope wished they could get along, but she refused to allow Steffi disrespect her and disrupt her life any longer. Steffi responded that Hope owed it to Thomas to allow him to fully enjoy the occasion. Hope questioned Thomas's decision, but Steffi replied she trusted his judgment. Hope scoffed, saying that if that were true, Steffi would not have convinced him to go with Douglas. Steffi stated that moving away from Hope was the finest thing Thomas could have done. Steffi yelled that Thomas was now out of his fog, and Hope should let him go. Hope questioned what she should do if she didn't want to and whether she still loved him. Steffi said that she felt sorry for Hope, who had not appreciated Thomas. Steffi concluded by advising Hope to be with someone single since she would do everything in her power to keep Thomas off the market. Steffi stated that Thomas had an interesting future without hope. In the design office, RJ and Luna kissed. They agreed it felt like it had been a long time since they had done that, but it was because she had been getting to know her father. She claimed Bill was RJ's least favorite person, but RJ responded this was no longer true because Bill created Luna. Luna revealed that Bill wanted to adopt her. RJ was ecstatic, calling it a significant milestone and a full-circle experience. It meant a lot to Luna, and she said it did the same for her mother. Luna recalled how she and her mother had struggled, and there was a void. She hadn't seen her mother grin so much since they became a family with Bill. RJ didn't understand why Poppy, who had deep feelings for Bill, hadn't informed Luna sooner. Luna admitted that her mother can be mysterious at times. Luna's phone rang, and she claimed she had an appointment. At Ayel Giardino, Deacon Hollis and Sheila were looking forward to Tom's set that night. The restaurant was packed with people in the evening, but upstairs, Poppy was unhappy with Tom for showing up at Bill's. Tom explained that he had wanted to invite Poppy to the concert and hoped she would bring their daughter. Poppy insisted that Luna was not his daughter and that he needed to stop. Tom stated he just wanted Luna to get to know him, but Luna had no idea who her biological father was. Poppy claimed Luna was aware and described him as a kind man. You just wish it was Bill Spencer, but it isn't. It's me. I'm Luna's father, Tom proclaimed. Tom wanted to visit Luna, who deserved to know who her biological father was. Poppy maintained it wasn't Tom and told him to stop his delusions. She told him to stay out of her kid's life, but Tom refused, claiming it was our daughter. He accused her of attempting to keep him away for an extended period of time in order to secure a wealthy man. Tom insisted that Luna learn who her real father was. Poppy claimed that Luna's father was Bill. You trapped that poor sucker. Tom replied. Poppy informed him that a paternity test had confirmed it. Tom dismissed it as untrue. He had kept his distance, but he felt it was time for Luna to learn the truth. Tom, for the last time, Poppy exclaimed. Tom stated that he knew Luna was his. He and Poppy had spent several evenings together, including in San Francisco. She stated that he had passed out on the tour bus, and she had spent the evening with Bill Spencer. Tom assumed she would say it was the wealthy Bill. Poppy said that her sister, a doctor, had given the test, and that Bill and Poppy were unquestionably Luna's parents. Tom questioned why Poppy hadn't found it out sooner. He said he tried to contact her, but she ignored him. Poppy accused him of getting swept up in the lifestyle, and she wanted to shield Luna from all of it. Poppy stated that he had continued to call and send her notes. 
Tom stated that the letters had been returned. She explained that it was because they had not meant anything. Tom, you are merely a fling from my past. Now leave us alone. Poppy placed an order. Tom remarked that Poppy could not separate him from Luna. He stated he had a program to do, but after that, he'd find Luna and tell her that her father ain't Bill Spencer. Tom urged that Poppy come honest, but stated that he was Luna's father nonetheless. He decided he needed to hit the can and she had to leave. Poppy's jaw fell, and her back struck the wall behind her. Back downstairs the place was busy and buzzing with background music and conversation. Jack groaned when he noticed Lee at the end of the bar in her scrubs. He didn't remember her like live music. She remarked that he felt he knew her so well. She admitted that she was there for a pickup and had no idea what had happened. Jack urged Lee to join him for a drink and asked Hollis to get another for the lady. Jack toasted Finn and Lee drank to it. Lee appeared distracted as she looked about, so Jack asked whether she was looking for somebody. Lee shook her head in annoyance. Lee strode away and ran into Sheila, who was amused to see him. Lee tilted her head and marched away. Sheila whirled and collided with Justin. She guessed that the place was filling up. Justin said it was the best meal in town, and he wouldn't miss the live music for everything. Tom arrived in the bar with Deacon, but without his energy drink. Hollis volunteered to get one from the rear, but Tom insisted on ice blue. He assumed he had left it backstage. Backstage, someone wearing leather gloves opened Tom's blue drink and sprinkled electricity into it. Sheila passed Jack as she walked in from the backstage area. Deacon Sheila and Hollis encouraged Tom. As Tom walked backstage, Jack shook his hand and said he couldn't wait to hear him play. Tom walked past Justin, who had come from backstage, looking annoyed. Next, Tom and Lee moved side by side to try to pass each other as she entered from the backstage area. When Tom arrived backstage, he took a sip of his drink and practiced performing his song. Deacon arrived to give Tom one more pep talk. Tom stated that the night was about a fresh start. He was ready to recover his life and all that belonged to him. Deacon took the stage to welcome everyone to the first night of live music at I.L. Giardino. He introduced Tom who entered the stage holding a blue drink in one hand and a guitar in the other. Tom strummed his guitar and sang, It's you hotter than that. Tom sang several tunes while he chugged his drink. Tom's vision dimmed as the audience applauded, and he collapsed to the ground. Lee scowled from her seat, watching Deacon Hollis and Sheila race to rescue Tom, who was not breathing. Sheila did CPR. R.I.P. Tom. It's curtains for showbiz veterans' bold and beautiful character. Unfortunately, Deacon's tiny family that he was creating around himself did not come to fruition. Tom's startling admission to Poppy that he was Luna's father, which they both knew, set off a cascade of events that left the upwardly mobile newcomer without a pulse. Sorry Bill, but we still believe this character is Luna's father. Tom died before you could spell DNA. It is unclear whether Poppy went to extraordinary lengths to silence him. Though Howard had previously appeared on Santa Barbara in 1987, Bold and Beautiful was his longest stint on a daytime drama. His other credits include The Andy Griffith Show, with older brother Ron, and four distinct Star Trek programs, including the original. The actor has a solo band and, in his spare time, creates handmade snow globes. Who knew?